want to get this briefing by email. Here's the sign up. Good morning. Here's what you need to know. With House and Senate negotiators reaching an agreement on a final version of their rewrite of the tax code, the party is closing in on its first major legislative achievement since assuming political control this year. Final votes on the revised legislation, whose overall cost remains unclear, could come next week. On Wednesday, the Federal Reserve predicted that the measure would modestly increase economic growth for the next few years without stoking inflation. One thing the debate over the tax overhaul has shown, the peril Americans face in making financial decisions based on the tax code. We're still sifting through the once unimaginable Republican defeat in Tuesday's special Senate election in Alabama. These maps compare the turnout with that of the 2016 presidential election. Roy Moore's loss again pointed to divisions between the party's establishment and its populist wing, led by Stephen Bannon. President Trump, who our White House correspondents note does not exactly do humble shrugs off the upset on Wednesday. Black voters, motivated by concerns that the nation is turning back the clock were essential to electing the Democrat Doug Jones. In Alabama, you can't go two miles without some Confederate emblem or icon or flag taunting you, one man said. In recent interviews, four women spoke about a pattern of violent sexual behavior by Russell Simmons, the co-founder of Def Jam Recordings. Disclosing incidents from 1988 to 2014, Three of the women said that he had raped them. In a statement, Mr. Simmons said, I vehemently deny all these allegations. These horrific accusations have shocked me to my core, and all of my relations have been consensual. Separately, PBS stopped distributing a talk show hosted by Tavis Smiley after an investigation found credible allegations of misconduct. As revelations of sexual harassment break, Women have been discussing the fallout and how to move forward. In this week's Times Magazine, women from across the working world take on this complicated conversation. And in an opus ed for the Times, the actress Selma Hayek writes, Harvey Weinstein was a passionate cinephile, a risk taker, a patron of talent in film, a loving father and a monster. For years, he was my monster. For many of the state presidents, one question is omnipresent. Is this worth it? Question mark. The threat of earthquakes, annual wildfires and high taxes have contributed to a net outflow of residents for more than three decades. Still, the wrath of God has failed to deter companies from thinking this is a great place to be, although it is expensive and crowded, one economist said. Disney said today that it had reached the deal to buy most of the assets of 21st Century Fox, the conglomerate controlled by Rupert Murdoch, in an all-stock transaction value at roughly $52.4 billion what Disney is getting in the deal. The FCC is expected to vote today to dismantle so-called net neutrality rules which have prohibited Internet service providers from blocking websites or charging them for higher quality delivery to consumers. It would be the biggest victory in Ajit Pai's event for 11-month tenure as the agency's chairman. This was the year tech giants realized that running powerful online platforms brings real-world responsibility, our columnist writes. The big mystery of 2018 and beyond is what exactly that responsibility will look like. Walmart is giving its 1.4 million workers early access to part of their paychecks. Critics say the company and others in the retail and service industries should also raise wages. U.S. stocks were mixed on Wednesday. Here's a snapshot of global markets. Tips, both new and old, for a more fulfilling life. You probably know you need a flu shot every year, but here's why. 5 Easy Skin Care Tips for Men This Winter Recipe of the Day 
come and roasted salmon. The New York City that never was. In today's 360 video, explore an exhibition at the Queen's Museum showcasing projects that, had they been built, would have drastically changed how the city looks. Partisan writing you shouldn't miss. Writers from across the political spectrum discuss Roy Moore's loss in Alabama. The glory of pizza. The pizza makers of Naples, called Pizza Iuli, have been added to UNESCO's annual representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Our correspondent visited the Italian city as it celebrated, as one pizza maker said. The product that has conquered the world. Best of late night TV. Samantha B saluted the women who came forward with accusations of sexual misconduct against the Republican candidate in Alabama. I hope that they are having a great day because thanks to them, Roy Moore sure isn't. Quotation of the day. It was exhausting. It was like making the record while swimming in rough seas. Drew Dixon. The former executive at Def Jam Records, who said fending off advances from the label's co-founder Russell Simmons was a full-time job. She has accused Mr. Simmons of sexual assault. Guess who's coming to dinner? The first Hollywood film to portray a kiss between a black man and a white woman was released 50 years ago this week. It came out only six months after Loving v. Virginia. The U.S. Supreme Court case that struck down laws against mixed marriages in 16 states. Set against the backdrop of the civil rights era, the film, in which a white woman introduces her black fiancé to her parents, didn't strike hard enough against racism, some critics said. The star, Sidney Poitier, was already a hit with white audiences, and he played the charming, Yale educated doctor. Our review noted that in a burst of incisive recognition that might also characterize the blue chip film, one character says, Civil rights is one thing, but this here is something else. Even so, the film was a milestone for race relations in America, and it embodies how times have changed. The same year, the Secretary of State, Dean Rusk, offered to resign if his daughter's marriage to a black man caused embarrassment to President Lyndon B. Johnson. Their wedding photo later appeared on the cover of Time magazine. Charles McDermott contributed reporting. Underscore 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 your morning briefing is published weekdays at 6 a.m. Eastern and updated all morning. Browse past briefings here. If photographs appear out of order. Please download the updated New York Times app from iTunes or Google Play. What would you like to see here? Contact us at briefing at nettimes.com. You can get the briefing delivered to your inbox Sunday through Friday. We have four global editions, timed for the Americas, Europe, Asia and Australia, and an evening briefing on weeknights. Check out our full range of free newsletters here.